Hey guys, One Piece Nation here today to bring you my review for Dragon Ball Super Episode 21, titled The Revenge Begins, Frieza's Army to Malice Strikes to Gohan. Okay, so, in this episode of Dragon Ball Super, for the first time we get a major difference from the movie. At least in the resurrection of F arc, we had plenty of differences in the Battle of God's arc, but for this arc, this is the first major one. And that is Togoma killing Shisami in the to try to take out Gohan. So what happened was, this was like the main part of the episode, I'll talk about the rest of it later. But what happened was, was that Shisami got Gohan a bear hug and was like choking him. And it wasn't, people, some people seem to think Gohan was trapped in that bear hug, he wasn't. You could tell just by the playful tone in Gohan's voice, he wasn't really taking it seriously at all. It was very obvious. He wasn't struggling. He wasn't even trying to go super dance. He was kind of pretty. He was kind of pulling like one of those back off, leave, don't do this, or I'm going to destroy you in so many ways. And just Ami didn't listen, but he couldn't do anything to Goku. So Gohan, Go Goku's all off with the dog with Whis and Beerus. But then we shot. Just on me through the chest, and the beam went straight through Gohan. So yeah, in this version, instead of Frieza one-shotting him, it's Togoma, which I like a lot more, because it, it doesn't, doesn't make him look like a much of a bitch, honestly. In my direction of F, he would attack from the front. Just see this, he would attack unfairly, and it doesn't make a character look bad. So I really did like that. So that was a really nice change. I loved it. Also, we had another another scene in the episode where we see Goten and Trunks, and you know they're playing a game. What is what a they're playing a game of catch. I don't know why they're playing catch. At least nor in the normal way because that doesn't seem like it would entertain them. But whatever. But they're playing catch, and they sense to go with power, and they start and they fly off, which makes it appear that they, they did. Gohan did say Majin Buu was asleep, but it does look like Goten and Trunks will be fighting in this, in this version. Especially due to the fact that we saw Goten in the trailer for next week's episode. Now, we need to talk about now, and we need to talk about the stuff with Krillin, and the stuff with Goku and Vegeta. So there was this whole thing with Krillin that I really liked, because there was this whole thing with Krillin where he was like really scared of all the Frieza soldiers, and he was you know getting really worried. And Frieza's a terrible person. Like this is just emphasizing Frieza's a complete bastard. But he starts making jokes like, "Oh, I'm going to kill you," over and over and over again, just like I did years ago. And Krillin starts freaking out, like, and then he decides to promise anybody in the in his whole, everybody in his army, any planet they want to rule over, they can leave the army and rule over that planet if they kill Krillin. But then Krillin, as he said, they, when they start attacking him, realizes that he's a lot stronger than them. And Master Roshi points it out to him that because he fought guys like Boo, Cell, Beerus, because he's been watching all the great battles, you have, you know, none of these people are fast enough that they catch him off guard. I love that. I love that. Now, the only they can explain why Master Roshi is strong, that's the fight they got. Considering the average terrible of Frieza soldiers are in, what, like, I know it's over 2 million, right? The average terrible of Frieza soldiers over a million, right? No, not over one, not over a million, over 2,000, right? It's in the thousands, like, it's in the average power level, like, 5 million, I think? No, no, yeah, like 5,000, I think. Yeah, you know, 5,000. The, the average power level for the soldiers is 5,000, so that, that alone, uh, like, Master Roshi couldn't be Radish, Radish with, like, what, a 12, 12,000? <laughs> like, eh, don't really like that. The master Roshi was old. He couldn't. He couldn't be King Piccolo, who was, who was like a six thousand. He couldn't be Pic Piccolo Junior, who was like a seven. Who was like mm, not uh, 
close to a thousand, maybe. The whole thing with bullcrap, alright? The whole thing with Master Roshi beating up Freeze the Soldier is a load of garbage. But whatever. It's awesome to see him doing stuff again. Again, yeah, so we get to see Krillin, you know, fight all the guys. And he does that one attack from a Saiyan Saga, which I really liked. Um, when, you know, like, when he, like, shoots the blast up in the air, it becomes, like, a ball, and then he, like, separates the miniature blast. I think in Xenoverse, they called it the Scatter Kamehameha. I know that, because I like to play a Krillin sometimes, and I use that attack a lot. Not like spamming, but I like to use it. I think they're pretty cool and useful technique. You know, I mean, I don't, I'm all like hiding in the water on you. We attack like Krillin's coward like style, but what? You're not here to listen to me talking about the number. You're here for the. You're here for this review. But. What happens then is that. Really, is that we kind of. We get a whole couple other scenes of like. The Z Fighter kind of like freaking out about Krillin. That's a little drawn out, but it's good. It gets drawn out, but it is really good. We do get one scene of Captain Ginyu looking, looking at all the, watching the battle, which I liked. The Ginyu, I'm pretty sure something's gonna happen next week with Ginyu. But, you know, the rest of it are kind of just them fighting. There isn't one really funny thing. When, you know, they, they, the Z Fighter use all their attack. Like, pick over the special bean cannon, scan that his tri beam, and they all, like, fight them all off. And then you see Yako just, like, do, like, a side kick and I kick one of the freaking soldiers in the face, and it's really freaking funny, because it's funny. there's like that one soldier left, and Jocko's like, oh, now that there's one left, I'm gonna be useful. But now let's talk about the most important scene in the whole thing, in my opinion, next to the Togoma and Gohan scene. The one with Goku and Vegeta. So apparently we sent them to what appeared to have been implied to be an alternate dimension, or something, because what happened was, was that Beerus was pretty much talking to Whis, and he was like, Why are these fools still here? They keep me from sleeping. He gets annoyed, and he looks at Goku and Vegeta and said, Well, are the two of you ready to fight me or not? And Goku and Vegeta refused. They're like, No, you would still kick our ass. No, we're not ready to fight you yet. That was pretty interesting to see. Seeing, you know, Goku be like, No, I'll fight you when I'm getting ready. But, you know, smart and unlike Vegeta was for most of the Cell Saga. Because, let's all be honest, everybody's an idiot in the Cell Saga, but whatever. I may do a video about like, the Cell Saga. I have a Boo Saga video coming up on why I, on everybody being stupid and stupid decisions and all of that. But, I don't know when that will be out. Who knows? My Dragon Ball video will come out randomly. Besides the reviews and the live reactions. But, no, but what happened was, when that Gohan, you know, Goku and Vegeta were, tr you know, so Goku and Vegeta were just like, what does he mean by that place? And he's like, we send them there. And Whis is like, I don't think they're ready. And he's like, we send them there so I can have some peace. And Whis is like, okay, if that, if that is what you want, Beerus, then I'll give you what you want. So he like does something with his staff and like a giant like a bl like a bl blood red blood red vortex appeared and they like sucked them into it. So that was very cool to see. They like sucked them into it and you know that was just really that was a really well done scene. The other day was so mysterious and vague, but yeah. We also get to see a little bit of Frieza training, which I'm going to talk about quickly. So I have everything in this episode, but the thing that made me go, thank you. Not the thing that I liked it the, the most, but the thing that I was just happy about the most was seeing Frieza's training. I had been so pissed off the past two weeks that we haven't seen it, so seeing it was very, made me very happy. I still want more. I still need more to feel satisfied, because just the fact that he trained for four months isn't enough. To make me be like, okay, it makes sense. No, I need flashbacks to explain it. I'm sorry. You don't go from being weaker than a Super Saiyan to being a stronger than a Super Saiyan God. You just don't do that. It doesn't make any logical sense at all. Even for Dragon Ball, it just does not make sense. And when something doesn't make sense by Dragon Ball standards, well, that's pretty freaking sad. But, what happened was, was that he apparently took Togoma. 
was training with Frieza. There was actually a rumor about this going around. I think it happened in the Totara manga. Totara? Totaru? I don't actually know if it got a Japanese name, but it happened in the manga. It happened in the manga, but Totaru. Totaru. It happened in the Totaru manga. Yeah, so what happened was, was that in the anime, so what happened was it depicted uh, Frieza practicing like torture techniques on Togoma every day. Like he would beat Togoma, Togoma within an inch of his life, and then he would heal up overnight, and then they would do it again the next day. This is a, I think he practicing his torturing technique that we can like torture Goku. That's what the understanding I got of it. But so then we see Togoma like. Er but after he shoots through Sasami and look at Togoma like, dude, what the hell? And Togoma gets an, a, a response that I just, I love. Like, Togoma, Togo, Togoma freaking insane, guys. Because Togoma's words here were hilarious, but Togoma's exact words were, Frida-sama taught me you need to be cold and merciless to get by, to survive and win battles. And I was just like, okay, I like it. I like it. Now, yeah, so that was really all that happened in this episode, but the rest of it was just the normal, like, background fighting and dragged out super nonsense. I can't really think of anything else that happened. You know, Goten and Trunks are going to the battle. Gohan was just through the heart of Revive by Piccolo, like he was in the movie. Not much else to really say. Oh, there was one part. Frieza had a flashback to a Gohan on Namek, and that was pretty nice. He identified him as the son of Goku. I like that. So what I'm excited to see in the future, this is a quick prediction video, I guess, missed in here, but what I'm excited personally to see is I'm excited to see how Frieza will react to Goten and Trunks. I mean, Goten is like a spitting image of Goku, and we all know Frieza hates Goku. That's the whole reason this arc is a thing. And Trunks and Future Trunk was the one that actually finished him off when he was in his mecha form when he came to Earth with his father, King Cold. And if you remember correctly, it was uh, Future Trunk who, you know, sliced him up and, like, blew into pieces, and yeah, that was Trunk. So, yeah, and then there's the whole, uh, well, you almost have to, even Broly had this thing in Second Coming where he thought Goten was Goku. But then again, who gives the crap about Broly? I actually have a Brawly video dropping later this week explaining why I hate that bastard. And I truly do hate Brawly with a burning, ever-living passion. But guys, not much else happened in this episode. If I had to rate this episode of Dragon Ball Super, I would give it an 8 out of 10. And I'm only giving it an 8 out of 10 because I cannot give any of these episodes a 10 out of 10. Because I cannot stop, stop myself from somewhat comparing the animation and the pacing to the movie. I try not to, but when I'm rating them, I always do it a little bit. So I always end up giving them a little bit lower. If, there, if, there was, if I had not seen Red Director of F yet, I would probably give this a 10 out of 10. But you know, it's actually being done a little bit better than Red Director of F, in my opinion. It's just, I, I can't, just for animation alone, I guess I can't. The animation is good for something done by Toei Animation Weekly. But compared to Retro Rest and Rest and Battle of God, it, it, it's not very good. But that is beside the point. Guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of Dragon Ball Super Episode 21. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. This is One Piece Nation, signing out. Have a great day, guys.